one sat alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows then jesus came and bade his darkness flee it's time to open the word once again with evangelist lester roloff on the family altar program Glory for all is changed when jesus comes to stay I wish it was back in the good old days. People talk about the good old days. Let me tell you something. There's just one good old day, and that's the ancient of days, and that's the day you live for Jesus. That's the only good old days you'll ever have. Count all your other days wasted. Every day of sin, count it wasted. Don't care how much money you made, how much you prospered, that's wasted unless you live it for Christ. There's no such thing. What does good old days mean? It means God old days. You've had no good old days until you've had some godly days and some Christ-like ways. And tonight, I realize that I face an empty generation. Job said, uh, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. I'm going to live a long time. I've got my nest fixed, and I'm going to be comfortable. I, my years will be like the sands of the sea. I'm going to live a long time. And yet, it wasn't very long till God stepped in and stirred up his nest. Now remember this, God never stirs up your nest down here but what he gives you a better nest up there. And I'll say something else, God never lets the devil disturb your nest if he permits the devil to disturb your nest down here, but what? God will make your better nest down here. Now I've got a nest, I've got a nest. I think everybody ought to have a nest, but it ought to be a spiritual nest. You don't, you don't need a lot of worldly things. We don't need a lot of junk and trifles and garbage. We just need the good spirit of security that's in Christ. Now turn with me, please, to the book of Habakkuk, and then we're going over to our main text. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 9. He starts off by saying, Woe, now that means there's a curse. Woe to him that covereth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people, and has sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. When? When you build your nest out of covetousness for the world. Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood, and establisheth the city by iniquity. That's liquor traffic, that's dope traffic. Well, behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the, wat as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. Now turn with me, please, to the book of Deuteronomy. This is the great passage that through the years I've enjoyed reading this. 32nd chapter, verse 9, the Lord's portion, Deuteronomy 32 in verse 9, the Lord's portion, for the Lord's portion is his people. That's his, didn't say people. He loves people, but the Lord's portion is his people. He's innocent in his family. He loves his children. That's all he's got. And he's looking forward, I think, to getting them all home one of these days. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land. Where did he find you? He said he found him in a desert land, found him in a lonely place. And you know what happens in a desert? No water, no vegetation. Famine, hard times in the desert. He found him in a desert land. There are two places that you can get lost and never lose, never find your location. That's on water and in a desert. All directions look alike. There are no markers. And the wages of sin is still death. 
Now, a lot of you people don't know what I'm talking about because you live such sheltered lives. You've got your little feathers just pulled right up over your eyes and ears, and you're stretched out and said, oh, <laughs> enjoying my nest. Yeah. Boy, you wait till your nest gets disturbed. You'll howl to high heaven. Why oh, did the Lord treat me like this? You ought to be treated like that. No man has the right to live in a nest of selfishness, a nest of pleasure loving, a nest of just the things of the world. And if you belong to God, he'll disturb your nest. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. Waste howling wilderness. Just such a wilderness. I know as well as I'm standing here, the preachers are going to give an account to a lost for a lost generation of mothers and dads and young people. And these silly preachers that are trying to act like the hippie world and the young people in order to win them and trying to set up their little old houses of, of pleasure in order to reach the young people and let them dress any way they want to and smoke and live like the devil, they'll give an account to God one of these days. Young people, the preachers like that are not your friend. They're just appearing on the surface to be your friend. If you really got in the jam, I mean really got in trouble, they wouldn't have a thing to help you with. They couldn't. Where did he find me? In a desert land, in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Now, verse 11, I suppose, would be our text. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, stirreth up her nest. Eagle stirs up her nest. What else does he do? Floodeth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Are you listening? There was no strange God. Television's a strange God. People fall at the shrine of Hollywood and worship hour after hour. People fall at the shrine of a stick of nicotine, and they, they worship. They blow that smoke. That, that's their incense. That's hell's incense. And they, they're, they, they're governed by it. They spend more time uh, smoking than they do reading the Bible. They spend more money buying cigarettes. That's their God. That's a strange God. I'll tell you another, and that's immorality. That's a strange God. But it's so ephemeral. It passes so quick and leaves you so nauseated and sick over your sin. And yet you want to go right back again and again. And no satisfying portion strange gods our people have today. The people live in such a strange world. They worship everything but God and but the Lord Jesus Christ. And notice, if you were to go up to the fourth verse, he'd say, he's the rock, capital R. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Now then, you know what he said? He is just right. He's just right. He's the only one that I know of that's just right. Now then, I'm just, and he makes me right because I'm justified by his grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then, stirring up your nest, stirring up your nest. I was on the farm 38 years ago, and I, I had about all the nest I wanted, I guess. I mean, I had no ambition. I really didn't. I'd had no ambition. And the Lord came in and stirred up my nest. And really, it scared me half to death. Fact is, it just about made me sick. Of course, I was sick already, but I mean, I, I, it scared me. I mean, I had never quoted a verse of Scripture in the church house. I had never offered a prayer in the church house, and I don't think many anywhere else, if any. I mean, I was not a man of prayer. I was not a man of faith. And I certainly uh, was, I was green and ignorant concerning the Word of God. If there had been one verse in the entire Bible that I could have quoted, and I doubt if I'd have got it right, that'd been John 3, 16. I mean, I absolutely knew nothing about the Word of God. Now then, God stirred up my nest. But it's a tremendous stirring. I thank the Lord for that day, that night when he stirred up my nest and said, Son, it's either preach, and he made me believe if I didn't preach, I wouldn't live. And I was scared to die, and I was scared to preach. Talk about stirring up my nest. When he got through with me, I didn't have any nest left. Now, the Bible says the eagle stirs up her nest. You know, the eagle is the queen of the air. Uh, a lot of these songs, you know, that the girls sing, they have a little tinge of modernism about them. And, uh, and, and they don't go deep enough sometimes. And uh, they, if, if, they sing, if that isn't love. They said, if that isn't love, then the sparrow can't fly. Well, the sparrow can't fly too good anyhow. I mean, the sparrow's just not noted. And so I changed that and said, the eagle can't fly. Now, that means something to me. Brother, when you get the old eagle where she can't fly, you done broke down the airplane of the sky. And then the song 
that they as sing about, uh, I found you where the lilies were blooming, by the way. Man, I didn't find him like that. I changed that. I said, I found you when the preacher was preaching the gospel way. We got a lot of stuff passing off today for the gospel. It, well, it sounds pretty, but it's not, it's not what it took to get us saved. It took more than a little lily out trying to grow in the mud puddle or something else to save me. It took <laughs> Jesus Christ to save me from my sin. And then that other, what is that other stanza? That's just his way of telling me he loves me. And, and so the songwriter said, uh, my greatest delight or joy is that God can trust in me, knowing that God can trust in me. He can't trust me. I changed that and I said, my greatest joy is knowing that I've trusted thee. I put my trust in Jesus. God couldn't trust any of us. We're too sorry to trust. But when Jesus comes in, he'll fix us where we'll be trustworthy. But let's, let's let our main joy be trusting him and instead of him trusting us. A lot of things too shallow today. We need more songs like Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. I heard the girls in there last night, a duet. I kind of want to record them, you know. We got a new duet. Yes, sir. Two young ladies singing and playing. And, uh, but I got a blessing. They asked me, said, is this bothering you? I said, not a bit. I went in there and sang with them. I don't know when we're going to record, I mean, you know, a record. But, I mean, uh, we got to singing through many dangers, toils, and snares. I've already come. Tis grace that's brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. I tell you, that, that'll work on your heart. A lot of this stuff will work on your feet and your head, but, but we need that, it'll work on your heart. We need heart music today, and we need to sing from our hearts, and God's not interested in your talent and your voice, see? He's not interested in how many notes you can read. He's interested in how much you love him. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. God wants us to do something for him because we love him, and that's true. And I, I won't, I'd, I'd, like for, I'd like for whoever works for me or with me to do it because they love Jesus, not because they're looking for a job. We don't have any hirelings. A hireling will leave the sheep if the wolf comes. And I don't want anybody coming to the enterprises that's going to run just because the wolf comes because he's going to come about every day. I mean, the wolf just shows up all along the trail. But there's no place for God's people to run or to be destroyed. He found him in a desert land and in a waste, howling wilderness. He led him about, instructed him, and kept him as the apple of his eye. Now, this is the picture, and this is the truth. I mean, I've read the stories of the eagle. The eagle uh, is, uh, she has a, have you ever heard of the, put your old eagle eye on him? said, boy, I'm going to put my eagle eye on you. That means I'm going to see you. Listen, an eagle can see a little rabbit darting through the grass. What old eagle eye. And that eagle can go down there. I, I've seen an eagle, I've seen an eagle pick up a big jackrabbit. And I mean, just, just like a helicopter. Just reach down and those old claws come out. And I've heard that old rabbit holler, oh, you could hear him, but it's too late now. I mean, he's gone. That old eagle got him, and that big old jackrabbit, and she started soaring through the air. Now, you know what she's gonna do? She's gonna eat him, and she's gonna use his hide for wall-to-wall -wall carpet. Ah, <laughs> oh, listen. That old eagle, listen, you talk about building a nest. An eagle can really build a nest. Why, they'll, they'll take the softest, nicest things you've ever heard of in your life, feathers of every kind, and they'll build an ark. I mean, they'll build a nest, and they'll, they'll put it in there, and then they'll lay their eggs. And then after a while, after a while, their little eaglets are born. They're hatched out. And then she begins to observe them. Oh, how wise she is. She'll get ready to take off, and she'll whisper something like this. Y'all stay in this nest. I'll be back. I've got to go get some provisions. I'm going to the store. Well, of course, the little old eaglets, they sit there, you know, and dumb as they could be, sort of like a human baby, you know, they can't do anything. So they said, yes, Mother, we'll be here when you get back. And so the old eagle, she stretches those wings and takes off down the runway, and she soars into the air. She turns all those eyes on, you know, and she begins to look. After a while, she sees her prey for the day. She grabs it up and comes back, and day after day, day after day, I want you to know she's taking care of those little eaglets, maybe a couple of them in there, and ah, listen, and they begin to grow. They begin to grow, and after a while, one of them says, say, I believe I'll take a look around. But I said, no, you better stay in here. Better stay in this nest. You know, Mama told us stay in the nest. And uh, he said, yeah, well, listen, I'll tell you, I'm, <clears throat> I'm getting big. You know, like little children, see, I'm ready to have my first date, 13, 14. You better look out. 
you better look out. And so uh, the little eagle climbs up, whistles back and said, hey, uh, Mary, come on up, come on up. My, listen, boy, you ought to look around. This is a big world, man. It's bigger than this. Come up, look around. And so uh, after a while, the mother comes circling in and makes her landing, and she finds both of them sitting on the side of the nest. And oh, they said, Mother, my, we came out to look around. And they said, we're enjoying the scenery. Look at the mountains and the trees. And, oh, listen, those little old eaglets, they were having them a time. And the mother said, well, listen, you all sure better be careful. You know you can't fly. And if you fall over that precipice, I mean, that's all of it. I mean, you'll never eat again. I mean, you'll be dashed to pieces down below. Now, you understand? Oh, yes, mother. We'll never go closer to you. Mm -mm. And so she said, all right, remember, because I'll have to leave here every day. And so she got them back in the nest, and they spent the night. And the next day, they woke up a little early and said, say, let's get out again. Let's get out again. And so they came out again. And they, but they said, oh, me. I tell you, one of them said, just look at mother. Oh, look at mother. I'd sure be afraid to fly like that. I tell you, man, if something happened holding her wings, mom was gone. I mean, that's just be all over. And then where would we be? And so, but, and so they said, listen, let's just get back in the nest. But listen, day after day, that old eagle was watching. She watched them. She said, have y'all ever stretched your wings? Well, I said, no. Well, said something, just stretch them. See how long they are. So, boy, I said, do them up and down, you know, like that. See? She'd get out there and practice with them. So they'd, hey. One of them said, hey, I nearly went off the ground. And he said, yeah, you better watch it. See, oh, look out now. Look out now. And so they practiced. And, and then when she was gone, they'd still practice. And, and one of them said, let's try. Oh, no, I'm not going to try to fly. No, sir, I'd never make it. I never, I'm going to stay here as long as Mom will take care of us, you know, or the welfare. <laughs> you know. <laughs> We're staying right in our nest. That's it. We're not going anywhere. After all, after all, we didn't have anything to do and hatched out down here. Let her take care of us. I her bit. Let her work. She go get a rabbit. She brings it back. That's fine with me. Wait a minute. One morning, the mother was gone, and the little eaglet woke up and said, mm, I didn't rest too well last night. I said, me neither. I said, something was punching me. I said, something sharp. Something sharp. I just kind of punched me, and I, I got over that, and it punched me on the other side. I said, I, I had a miserable night. I said, me too. I said, I got every place in that nest, and I couldn't find no comfortable place. I said, that's strange. I said, it never has been that way before. Look out. Somebody's stirring up the nest. Old mother had been taking a few things out, a little of the down and a little of the rabbit hide and a little of the feathers and, and the thorns is protruding and is making the little eaglets a little unhappy with their nest. Can you imagine a mother disturbing the nest of her little children? <laughs> but she was. One of them said, I'm just kind of glad it's getting up time. I'm getting out of here. I'd rather stay outside and inside. I tell you, that old nest is just don't appeal to me much anymore. I just have to force my way in to go to bed. Fact is, I wouldn't mind just roosting on top of the thing, see? I'm tired staying in that nest. Old mother was looking at them, blinking her eyes, you know. She was, said, y'all stretch your wings some more. And they did. And said, now, mother, don't get any funny notions. We're never going to fly across that place where you're going. My, that's the most dangerous thing I ever, I, I, I just can't imagine me ever being able to fly like that. And I'm not going to take any chance on killing myself. I'm not going to do it. She said, all right, honey, y'all just exercise your wings a little. Mother, be back after a while. And so... She came, uh, and they were exercising their wings, and uh, she uh, swooped down and made a little circle, you know. And, and I tell you, she'd been really doing a little acrobatic flying, you know, and she'd come down and go up, and, boy, the little old eagle said, I wish I could fly like that. I guess I never will. I guess, you know, I heard, the old mother heard say, that's what you think. If you're my little eaglet, you'll fly or die. And the day came. And she came down, and the other little eagle said, have you noticed her coming so close to us when she swooped down like that? Have you noticed that? Yeah, well, said, man, I don't want her to touch me. I'm going to back off a little. And so directly one of them came out and sitting out, and the old eagle came down, and pew, and off the ledge the little eagle went. Right down. Oh! Ah! 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 And there they go. There they go. It's all over. And she said, Mother, how could you do me like this? I told you I couldn't fly. Down she goes and heading toward the rocks and ow, hollering. And the mother, the old mother, just before she came down, swooped down under and said, get on my back, honey. And boy, that little eagle said, gladly I'll do it. <laughs> and sat down on the back and the mother said, now ride me back, we're gonna fly. 
Boy, she soared up through the air. Piggyback. <laughs> Eagle back. And she soared up till she got up to the rock. And she came in for a sweet, soft landing. And the little eagle said, hold me. Little old heart just a beating like that. Oh, mother, you won't ever do that again, will you? Oh, it's scary. And the other little eagle said, ma'am, and already gone back in the nest, just peeping out. You're a terrible mother. Think about that, mother. I could have gotten killed. I could have gotten killed. The old mother said, I'd rather see you dead than not to see you fly. An eagle is known not by her beak or her feet, but by her wings. And you'll either fly or you can die. And I'm responsible to teach you to fly. Now get a good night's nice rest. No, day after day, the old mother would have to sweep them off. She'd pick out one and sweep it off. And the other would stand until one day, oh, blessed day, that little old eagle started falling down through and directly its wings began to lift it up and it began to soar. And oh, I said, mother, Fly along close, but don't bother me. And she began to fly through the air. And after a while, she came back in and made a landing on the old rock. And the other little eagle said, hmm, if you can do it, I can. And the mother said, yes, you can. And off she went. And oh, it wasn't very long until the little old eaglets would wake up in the morning and say, mother, you gonna let us go with you today? We want to fly all the way across to the other mountain today. We want to help you catch rabbits, bring in the food. Why, I can hear them as they came back in at the close of the first long flight, solo. They came back in and sat down on the rock and said, you know, mother, I'd rather fly than to eat. The joy of my life, I was so afraid. You remember the first time you knocked me off of that rock? Yes, honey, I remember. I remember when my mother stirred up my nest also. But, oh, listen, you've learned to do the thing I've longed to teach you. And the way I got you to fly, I had to stir up your nest. Mother, I want to ask you something. Did you take some of that good soft padding out of our nest? The old mother smiled said, yes. I knew that as long as you loved that nest, you'd never get out and fly. And you'll never get anything done in your nest. I had to get you out of the nest. Whose nest are you in tonight? What kind of nest? Nesting and resting and jesting. This old world. The young people got on the radio the other day and said, y'all come down, all you kids come down to our church because we have fun. We'll tell funny stories and we're jesting down at our church. Life is more serious than that. God is permitting us to stir up your nest. And I wish I could get the American mothers and dads, I mean the people that are mothers and dads, to get their silly nest stirred up and begin to put their children first and teach them to soar into the heavens with Jesus. They'll never be happy till they do. Most of our children in this generation, you mothers and daddies, listen to me, most of them have never learned to fly. They're the most shielded, and yet they're the most desperate and the most defeated children I've ever known in my life. Brother, when you get saved, you want to look like God's people. You want to talk like them and walk like them and act like them when you get saved. Oh, today's the day of salvation. I believe I'll close. Jesus Christ had no earthly nest, never did. Finally, he'd been looking for a nest for 33 years. He didn't have a wife nest. He didn't have a family nest. He didn't have any material nest. He didn't have many friends nest. His own people turned their back on him, came unto his own, his own received him not. And finally, after 33 years, he found him a nest. That's the nest he'd been looking for. He walked up Golgotha's rugged hill and stretched those hands of mercy and pointed around the world and said, this is the nest I've been looking for for all these years. Y'all start your hammers and get out your spear. This is the nest that my Father has chosen for me, and I delight to do thy will, O God. And Jesus died in a bloody nest in order that you and I might have a spiritual nest. And we ought to be grateful to God for what he's done for us. Don't be afraid, girls. This is the nest stirring time. And we're going to learn to fly for God. We need soldiers, not sissies. We need men and women that will build Christian homes and pray. Get rid of the trash and the junk 
rake out the garbage and clean out the house and let God use your home and your life. We need daddies that'll stand straight and tall for Jesus and that'll get their families ready to meet the Savior, make a living, take care of the needs. We need wives that'll stay home and read the Bible and go to the prayer closet every day and talk to the Lord until heaven comes down and the little children walk in the way that's right. The greatest heartbreak you'll ever have is when you see your children wreck their lives and fall over the precipice and hit on the rocks below because mother and dad didn't teach them to fly and you'll give an account to God for not teaching your children to fly. Bow your heads while we pray. Thank you for joining us today on the Family Altar Program with Lester Roloff. You may listen to the preaching and the special music of the Family Altar Program 24 hours a day when you visit our ministry website, roloff.org. We love hearing from our listeners. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please write to us at Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 85536. Again, that's Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 85536. This broadcast is made possible by the prayers and financial support of listeners like you. Thank you for partnering with us, and remember that Christ is the answer.